I'm standing out the front of the Sydney headquarters of one of the richest and most powerful companies in the world. Have you ever heard of a company called Glencore Extrata? No. Have you ever heard of Glencore Extrata? No. Have you ever heard of Glencore Extrata? No. No, I haven't, to be honest. No, never. No. Do you want to have a guess at what they do? Uh, building. Manufacturing something, I suppose. Right. Extract something for somewhere. Very close. <laughs> in fact, Glencore Extrata is one of the richest mining companies in the world. So, how did such an unknown company get so big? For 40 years, Glencore has gone into some of the world's most unstable and corrupt countries and thrown its weight around to make money out of their resources. It broke United Nations embargoes against apartheid South Africa to prop up the racist government there with much needed oil. In Colombia, it was associated with paramilitary squads who executed villages standing in the way of its zinc and copper mines. It was impossible for a multinational company to be in this region without having a relationship with the paramilitaries. Impossible. In Zambia, it has poisoned the drinking water with acid while also avoiding taxes. Here's some water I took. Would you like to wash your hands with it, sir? I can see what it is. Yes. I can see it, yes. Would you like to wash your hands Nothing. with your Glencore water? Oh, I know what the water is. I've seen it. I've been to that river. And is even accused of profiting from child labor in its mines in the Congo. This 10-year-old boy appears to be working on a mining concession, still owned by the billionaires of Glencore. You might think that these are rather extreme examples in far-flung corners of the world. But the truth is, Glencore's harsh practices have followed it wherever it goes. And now Glencore has an Australian mining community in its sights. They've taken over a mine that has been operating for over 100 years in the North Queensland town of Collinsville, sacking all 400 coal miners, decimating the local community and unleashing their hard tactics on Australia. Our local community kindergarten may close. What I failed to involve the community any decisions that they're about to make about the future of this mine. I'd like to ask Glencore and Extrata Management if they could help me explain to our seniors and the kids that use our centre why it is that everyone in town is unemployable. Or is this just a way to deunionise the mine and our community? We're normal human beings that want to be given an equal chance. Do you agree with sacking your entire workforce and rehiring them on lower conditions? No, of course Definitely. not. No, that's terrible. I think it's very unfair. <laughs> From a personal standpoint, if I lost my job, I'd be upset. It's not fair. In my country, this is like normal. And that's why I'm here, because, yeah, I can't imagine that that things would happen here. It's dumb. You can't say it better than that, can you? Don't like that at all. Don't like that one bit, right? Glencore Extrata has picked Collinsville as the first major industrial showdown under Tony Abbott the Patricks of the Outback. They know that if they can pick off the 400 workers in Collinsville, it will roll back community standards across the country, destroying the civilised industrial relations that Australians have always been proud of. And that's something that nobody wants.